Black Mecca, the story of Chatham's Black community. We are in Chatham, Ontario. What's your name? Uh, my name is Dorothy Wright Wallace. Dorothy Wright Wallace. And we're at the Chatham Camp Museum. So Dorothy, I wrote this book called The Black Church of Canada from the modern perspective, from the Caribbean perspective, when they came here in the 50s. But in the book, I dedicate chapter to the indigenous black settlements. Very much so. The church was one of the very first things they did when they got here. They got made sure because we couldn't go to their schools. And, and as you walk around the town, I mean, there was white churches all around us, but it was to get those churches made and to get us going. It took a while yeah. because they did not let us go to their schools. We didn't we had to, no, we were not allowed to go to their schools. We were not allowed to, yeah. So it was very much part. And uh, when I was younger, yes, yes. a little. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I know in my generation, they kind of cooperated with one another for the younger generation, meaning that um, First Baptist was at 10 o'clock, the AME, it was at 1230, oh. and the, the, my, I always called it at that time, it went from BME to community, I always said, because right. that's what where I went right. was community, yeah. and it was at 3.30. So, so none of the churches overlapped in time? No. Wow. They kind of... Uh, uh, so it was a village in the early 1800s, yeah. right? Yeah. Laborers, doctors, teachers, business people, a Mecca. It was all here, like you imagine. So why do we say um, the Mecca was because these people, when they came here, they were well-educated people. Mm. And a lot of people like to think, oh, you know, we just got off the boat in North Africa. Right, right. right. That was not so mm. when they came here to Chatham. Right. And what I like to tell the young people, one of the favorites in here for me and my hero is Sophie Sophie Jones. Sophie Jones? Right here. Is she there? She is was, that her right here? Yeah. Sophie and Jones. she wanted to be a doctor, mm. and uh, but back in those days, they didn't want women to, you know, we couldn't do anything. Is it the woman and, and her skin color, uh, or her that was a woman? It, All you of them. have to remember that we weren't treated any better yeah. here than that they were in the United States. The only difference between us and the United States is that we were under England's call. Uh, By that, right. you know, that's no different than any of the islands that England had. You know, you always had had uh, the British yeah. kind of, you could be under their call. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we were just part of that. But Sophie, she uh, went to school. She's from a well-known family. Mm. Her, her father was a gunsmith make these guns and anyways he his father worked hard enough to get their slavery out of Oberlin Ohio oh. and they when they were in Oberlin Ohio they went to school and got their education there oh. and anyway so when he came to Chatham he had these children and Sophie is born here right here in the city of Chatham mm. She went off to Toronto and became a, te a teacher and a nurse. Yeah. She came back to Chatham and taught and went across the border in Michigan. And she's Michigan's first black duck. No way. Born and raised here. I knew I nothing love about it. this lady until she, till, till I was in my 70s. And I'm mad about it because, right, right. you know, we need our heroes. Absolutely. Tired of Laura Secord, you know. Mm. Just, uh, that's all that we got. But we did not get get this education of, of what these people. So these are her siblings. Uh, yeah, those are her sisters. Her they sisters, were also okay. were very well. One was a, a great engraver. They all the Jones family is very well known in Canadian history. 
Oh, but we yes. talk about Dr. Delaney because Dr. Delaney was very well known in in, in the States. He was the, the one that Lincoln put in charge of the black troops. Hmm. But to think he lived here in Chatham right. for nine years. Ah. And nothing. Right. You know, right. Just nothing. So then, then we talk about you know our Dr. Anderson and Dr. Yeah. Abbott and all the other so ones. Ruff, Anderson Ruffick, because I talk about him in Black History. So he's yeah. from Toronto. Yes. What I gotta update and that. His father was one of the richest black men in the world. Well, he wasn't born in Chatham, actually. Oh. He says he was born in Toronto, so he's from Toronto. So what's the significance to Chatham? Oh, Kent County's first black coroner, president of the Chatham Medical. So he from Toronto, but came here and practiced. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a good point of clarification. Yeah, they I, had money before they arrived. Right. Here, and they were educated. Mm. I mean, and Dr. Delaney, uh, I, lo I love him because he was always trying to find a place for us, and he never, ever did. And mm. I don't have to agree with him. I don't know how long I've got, but I, I do not see where my children are ever going to be on an even level with with white children. It just is not. It, it's so divided that they'll never be able to to be overachievers. We're overachievers, we know it. Because we're always trying to prove ourselves and I don't think that it's fair that your child has to how could we omit the pages of this rich history, Canadian history, Black Canadian history, that is really up sometimes to the educator to bring out, and as Dorothy, as you could hear it, the hurt, um, trying to ensure that her heroes or our heroes, as she knows it generationally, that they, they become part of the curriculum in Canada, ending how this was an absolute thriving, independent community, um, highly skilled, highly educated. Their stores, they were entrepreneurs, as you saw, as I showed you the pictures there in the, in the museum. Anywhere you find Black settlement, wherever you find Blacks congregating historically, you'll always find the Black church playing its role sociologically to bring unity, social justice and the communities together. Um, just as it did as the Caribbeans came here in the 50s, similarly it did, you know, through the Underground Railroad in, in Chatham, Ontario. So it's really just fascinating to dig a little bit deeper on the history of the Black Church in Canada. Hi, so this is the first stop on Oh yeah, Marianne Shad, yeah. Uh, yeah, she's a pretty well-known woman. Yeah. Right. She came um, to Canada in the 1850s, but she was born in Delaware, and she actually has ancestors from Germany. So her last Germany. Name, okay. Yeah, so her last name, the spelling has changed over the years. Ah. It used to be S C H A D T. Some people spell it with one D. Um, now ah. it's S H A D D. So yeah. Just different spelling, but all the same family. Mm -hmm. She has descendants uh, predominantly residing in Buxton to this day. And so, yeah, she's not Till this old. day. Yes, to this day. So, you find a lot of her um, descendants here. Yeah. And she's most well known for her provincial frame and newspaper. So, yes. she was both black and a woman. She didn't think a lot of people would read her newspaper, so she actually signed a man's name. And then later, her initials, and then finally her own name. So, she kind of worked around the system for sure. Wow. And she's a very inspiring woman. Yeah. At the age of 60, she actually became a lawyer. So, right. never too late to... Um, so true. That's right. So you can take pictures if you want. I'll yeah. read it or yeah. Along. Great, thank you. And she went back to the states, I think, when she became a lawyer. Yes, I yeah. So. Yeah. And she actually had a newspaper in Toronto for a little bit too. Right. Like, think of how progressive that would be in the mid 1850s. Mm. The Americans were more open to black women being a doctor. It's so telling. Given that Canada was has been perceived as the underground, oh, we're, we've received all these people, but yet they were stopped, no. and they had to go to the states to get the education. 
Exactly. exactly. Okay. So the significance of this church is John Brown. So he was in the display, um, like one of the last displays with a long beard. So he was actually a white man, an mm. abolitionist. And the story goes is when he was a young child, his dad asked him to go on an errand and he saw a child his age getting beat. Uh, so ever since then, he wanted to abolish slavery. And so as he got older, he wanted to do a raid on Harper's Ferry in West Virginia. So that was a place that had a lot of artillery. And so he thought if he took all of that, then the government would have to have a conversation with him. Unfortunately, it went south pretty quickly. Um, there wasn't enough men, so a lot of them did lose their life. Oh, man. The reason why we know this story is the one Chatham man that went with him, Osborne Perry Anderson, he was just a lookout so he could escape. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Is there a reason why he's put in front of the church? So there's no connection to him to First Baptist, is there? Yes. So um, he actually, this was his meeting place. Oh. So he was trying to recruit people. He only got one here. Um, oh, and wow. actually in yeah. the church there's um the original table that he signed his constitution so he really thought he was going to overtake like the artillery and like have a conversation with the government so he created a constitution and everything yeah. and first baptist church back then was it a predominantly black church yes so okay. um lighter skin members would actually come here so there was division in the black community so darker skin members would have went to ame which we'll show you yeah. soon and then lighter skin would have came here but he got one recruit, and so that recruit ended up that we know that history, right? Yes. So, yeah, wow. So that's why you call it the John Brown's Convention. Oh. I'd like to get a picture of him. I'm oh. sure there's some historical, if I Google him, I'm sure I'll For find sure. something, and eh? If not, if you come back, yeah. Like so he is American. Yes. Yeah didn't live here but he comes here to try and find recruits exactly and so that's the thing um my pastor he's american actually and he was telling us like we celebrate john brown thinking he was like a spark of the civil movement even though he was unsuccessful whereas americans mostly think he's like a thief um so like there's different stories about yeah. him depending who you talk to so yeah there's two methodist churches in chatham so ame two. is more like your Malcolm X, they were more yeah. about like fighting for slavery um, and violent, whereas BME will show you as the British Methodist Episcopal Church. Yeah. And then this would have been where the BME Church was, so the British Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, right there is the original cobblestone. This? And uh, as you could see, the historical site of the BME, it really is a, a tragedy of history, of historical significance. And it kind of spoke also to the lack of. Uh, um, regard for the history of Black Canadians in the Chatham region. However, unfortunately, the last member passed away, so no electricity was in the building, so they demolished the church. And it's very sad because this was actually the first um, British Methodist church in existence in Canada. Oh my goodness. We do have a plaque back there. Yeah, awesome. Big. So yeah. is this a black church still? Um, so anyone is welcome. But I mean in terms of the numbers of black people that like do black people by majority? So there's like the AMI denomination, mostly in the States, it's mostly black. Yeah. But like Chatham is like mostly white. Um oh, okay. just because like the population here is oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So do they teach about because AME is very big on teaching black history within the theology. For sure. Is that the same here too? Yeah. Oh okay. So the white people are getting that, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. And like people say, like, we're kind of like the loud church. So like first off, just more sit in your seat, you know, clapping, whereas we're like up. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> You're like the Pentecostals. Sure. <laughs> what a lot of Caribbeans don't realize is that the AME, many of the AME churches worship style is very much like the Pentecostal churches, shouting, clapping, singing, drums, 
you name it. So it was so interesting that even in Southern Ontario, where I, I we know mostly of the Amy churches in the in the urban yeah, center. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Rely on so did you guys grow up knowing about black history and the oh, yeah. significance it was of okay. Embedded in me like it was okay. Being a child. But I feel like that also comes from like them growing up here. I go to that church like Right. Have ties to the Wish Center and the Black Mecca Museum. But Different influences that are does that does do you feel like that made you stronger in your identity? The fact that you even have to rely on the school system to know about If I had to rely on the school system, honestly, I wouldn't be no, talking to you today right. about what I know. Right. Um, and I did learn it this summer working here, but no, nothing against the school system because like I'm planning to become a teacher. Nice. But um when it's February, we learn American Black history or yeah. Canadian. Yeah. We're not learning about the local community. Exactly. Um, history. Exactly. It's so frustrating too, because like you guys came from Toronto. Yeah. I live in Chatham. My school's in Chatham, and we're not even spending yeah. what ten minutes to visit and learn. Exactly. So exactly. That can be frustrating, but. Well, I. Chatham, Ontario, at one point has had as high as a thirty percent Black population. Uh, today is just a little bit over 2%. And what is so interesting with Chad of Ontario is that despite the decline of the indigenous black population that had very large black settlements in the mid 1850s, um, coming out of the Underground Railroad, today there's a bustling Jamaican community that is really growing leaps and bounds. And that has much to do with the farm worker program, for many of the men who came in as farm workers, eventually settled in the Chatham area. In part two, um, I'll be doing my experiences going to Dresden, Uncle Tom's cabin, and meeting a black farmer. So stay tuned for part two. Hey, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you too. Welcome to our farm. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm seventh generation here. My kids are the eight, so we like this. Fascinating to dig a little bit deeper on the history of the black church in Canada. Purchase the book. Volume 2 is out. The Black Church in Canada. Visit cleoproduction.com for info.